Hey people, what's going on? I'm the Broken Puppet and back with another video for today. It's gonna to be a really cool one. If it's your first time to my channel, make sure you click like and subscribe to my channel. I've got hundreds of videos. This video is also sponsored by tattoospace.com. I've got some really cool progress brushes on there. So if you want some more learning tools, head over there, check it out. That's tattoospace.com. But for now, people, this is how to draw an old school eagle. It's really traditional. And we did have some Bristol board paper, I've got some pencils, I've got some Windsor and brush markers. Uh, but you guys can use whatever you guys have, you know, I'm just going to be using some basic stuff like Sharpies and stuff, nothing crazy. So you can pretty much copy what I do at home, really simply. Don't forget the old razor as well, you've got to have the old razor, as we call it over a rubber. You know, it rubs things out, that's why we call it rubber. But yeah, I know countries is apparently something else, but yeah. Anyway, ignore that people. Here we go, this is how to draw an old school eagle. The Sharpie is going to be the main tool here. Uh, it's going to be really cool use that for the outline and yeah the coloring is going to be done with the gray shades with the window note brush markers but you guys can use like anything you can use pencils paints whatever tool you guys prefer just go for that one but people here we go i'm going to start off with this really cool sort of like curved triangle kind of shape it's going to be the basis uh, for the body it's a really good sort of point to start with and it really kind of helps get a positioning right this is going to be a really tra uh, traditional kind of classic pose as well so come back about a third of the way i'm going to draw these two lines curving up Depending on how you put these lines, is going to be the position tip of the wings. So if you want the wings coming back, put them in this kind of position. If you want to be a bit more forward, just bring that line a bit forward like this. But yeah, depending on where you want the wings, uh, this is the line that's going to build the basis from that from. Now you can turn these into kind of like butterfly wings. You want to bring this nice kind of curved line outwards like this, connecting from the bottom to the top. This is basically going to be the position for where the wings are going to go for width wise, basically. So you want to get a nice bit of body in there. Now for the face here, you're going to come down and put a little circle inside that bit of triangle that's after those parts of the wings. And bring this line around the edge. You're going to run it around that original initial triangle shape. Going a little bit wider and you can bring a little zigzag just at the end there. And this is going to bring uh, the head shape into focus now. So you've got the eye, you've got a bit of fluff around the outside. And just run that outside the edge, you're going to create this little curved line. You want it to be really curved. This is going to create the beak. And you want it to be a really sharp curve. I'm going to bring it back. I use like a little bump just here so you get one little curve and a little, another little curve. And that connects up onto the line and a little triangle shape just to create a bottom part of the beak. It's really simple, a little teardrop shape just here around the outside there just kind of finishes it off. You can have this going where it's touching the eyeball as well. So it just fits the space just right. Now from here I'm going to bring this little line, it's going to curve down like this. You're going to create one part of the leg and then it kind of comes off, you're going to create this one curve, you're going to create a secondary curve and a third curve. Off the back of the foot just here, another little curve just going another way. It's a really good way for getting a structure for the legs. Now this little line just coming out here, it's going to be where like the, the uh, fur and the hair is going to come off the, well, there's no fur, but it looks like it. <laughs> where, like, where the feathers come off the legs. I've got this one big curve here, because you're going to get his knee. And the knee's going to go and, uh, be the sort of basis for the other foot. The other foot's going to be the exact same way you've done the other one as well. So you bring this curve line off, uh, a few little lines just off the back. And that's going to kind of build the rough sort of shape for it. I've got a little line just coming off the bottom part of the tail now. It's going to build the basis for that. Um, I tend to divide that bit into five. Uh, we'll do that as we kind of go. But um, I've got my Sharpie here, so I'm going to start bringing the details so I can everything nice and clearly. Now around the eye, I'm going to bring that line back and curve just into that little circle. So you get a bit of an eyebrow. And then bring a little circle around just to finish off the eye. The beak and the uh, front part of the um, nose are going to be pretty much the exact same. So we're going to go over the top of that just like this. So you can see it nice and clear. And then we're going to bring this zigzag. The reason I'm starting with the space bar is because this is the part that's going to fit in the front. It's going to be, it's going to be in front of everything else. Nothing's going to be in front of this. So it makes sense to start with this. That way you don't overlap things. Now the little part there, I've just kind of made a little bit kind of curved. So you've got a zigzag formation, but I've just got a little kind of curve to it. And a few little, little line dots just here in the face. There's a little bit of extra detail. So we've got a face in there. So now we've got a face, we can start branching off and get other things. So we've got the wings. I'm going to create this little curve that's going to connect those outside, you know, the outside line. Um, this is just helps you get that really nice kind of curve off the wing to the positioning. Now I like it to come from behind the face. Some people sort of go from the bottom part of the face as well. Um, I tend to sort of kind of build up from here. So I'm going to create this line curving up like this, about halfway through that initial line. And just here, I'm going to create these little semicircle bumps. And that's just going to connect up to that little edge just there. And this is basically giving a foundation to start the feathers. You know, once we have this, we can kind of put the feathers off of this. So I'm doing the exact same thing just on the other side there. So we've got two foundations for the wings put in place now. And I'm going to put a little circle just here and a little semicircle bit just here. And I'm going to do these like sort of Japanese kind of scale techniques. So it's like little semicircles, and then the next semicircle is going to fit in the middle of the one above it. Um, it just kind of gives a bit of like uh, feather kind of texture, you know, because we want a few different textures here. We're going to have this, and it's going to go into two rows of feathers afterwards. So you've got a midline just there to divide it up. So you know where one row is going to go. 
And it's basically like this semicircle kind of curve coming back, you know, like an R sharp one. And the top feathers just here, the first three are going to come to a point and come back. Just the first three. You can do four if you want, um, but I generally do the first three. The first three are going to have a sharp point and the other is going to be curved. It just gives like a nice tip to the end of the wing and makes the wing feel a little bit longer as well, which just makes it more elegant. So the exact same here. So you can see it nice and clearly. You've got three little tips just there curving back. And then the curved line is just coming back, repeating, slowly rotating as it follows the wing shape until it disappears underneath. And now we've got here, I'm going to do the exact same kind of sort of a semicircle kind of curved texture just through the knee bit, just coming off that direction. And on the other leg, it's going to be just kind of curving down the side of it rather than looping around. Now I'm going to go everything with a Sharpie just so you can see it nice and clearly exactly what we just put in there, just in case you can't see it clearly enough. So just looping around semicircles like that. Just a couple of rows do, you don't got to go too crazy. You know, if you're doing a massive eagle, you can go for as many as you want, but this is kind of sort of mid-range sort of size, so we're not going to do too many. So you see that nice kind of curve just coming back, just looping around. And as it comes back, it just slowly rotates. Now, they're really kind of therapeutic, uh, therapeutic to do these kind of ones. You know, when you get this kind of loop motion going, it's just really fun to do. Don't worry about it if you don't get it first. Once you sort of start, you just muscle memory will just kind of like remember as you sort of do more of them. You know, you might find the first couple of struggle, but once you kind of get there, you hand motion will just take care of the rest. Try to keep the rotation about the same on both sets of, you know, feathers just there as well. You don't want one to kind of be more exaggerated than the other one because it might just feel like it loses a bit of direction. Now you can kind of split it in two as you get towards the bottom if you want to and create another sort of secondary curve, but that's a much more advanced technique and I'll teach you in another video. But yeah, just keep that nice repeating pattern going, you know, so it's all about getting that nice repeating patterns. You know, try to keep each one roughly about the same kind of distance, about the same kind of width, you know, everything nice and symmetric and parallel. Now we've got that, I'm going to bring this leg round for that knee, a nice kind of curve. Keep your lines nice and simple as well. You don't want to go too kind of crazy, just nice, simple, straight curve lines. You know, the more simple, the better, really. I'm going to get this repeating line just coming through here. Again, it's going to add that kind of sort of like hair or sort of like, you know, like feather kind of texture coming off the legs. Now, this one's going to have the little lines. You can see how the sort of curve pattern is slightly different on this leg and sort of just bring it down the shin of it. And now with the feet, you're going to see how I sort of do this. So you're going to bring the curve line back like this, create a little loop at the end, create a little loop just coming down and curving around. It's a really simple way of doing the feet, but you can't go wrong. So just bring the line around, curve, loop it, and then just a little line underneath. Add your claws onto the toes, or talons, or well, I'm not sure how you put it. I think it's either talons or claws, one of the two. But yeah, just add that to the end. You can have it sort of as long or sharp as you want. You know, but this is just like a really standard way of doing like the feet and stuff. That's just really fun and easy to do. I know a lot of people tend to struggle with this, but once you get that kind of loop motion, like you see here, just sort of done the three loops and then just bring a little curve back. It's just a dead simple way of doing it. You can't really go wrong. So that's the two feet in there now. So you pretty much just have like a little bit of body back in the uh, and the tail feather. So I'm just going to bring in the two side lines like this. And now I'm going to add a few of the uh, semicircle curves, just kind of add a little bit more body, you know, on that little back bit there. I don't want to start with a feather line too soon. So I'm just going to bring that down a bit, just like so. It just kind of extends the body, makes the bird feel a little bit bigger, which is what I want. And now I'm going to divide this into about five. You can do it into as many as you want or as few as you want, but I tend to find three is the smallest amount and five is like an ideal amount. And once you go down, I'm going to get this little wavy line just at the bottom, just kind of connecting each one up and then a the secondary one that I'm just going to colour in underneath. Now in between each one of these, I'm going to do like a little thin line, just down the middle, about halfway. It's just a really cool little bit extra detail that I just like to do. So you can see here now, we have pretty much all the line work here is done, so just rubbing this out. And we're going to go into a nice little bit of self-promotion here now. So this is my Heads and How To sets. That's with TattooSpace.com, like I mentioned earlier, I'm affiliated with them. You've got 30 heads in this one, and you've got 30 12-stage tutorials like this. So if you want some more learning tools, head over there. They've got really great stuff. You've got my sets plus other ones as well. I really highly recommend it, people. I'm sure you'll like it. But for now, people, back to the shading. I'm going to use the Wizard and Brush Markers here. So I'm going to use the XB Black, and I'm going to use the Warm Shade. So it's going to be like WG1 to WG5. Um, don't get caught by the numbers. It's just the codes that are on the pens, really. It's basically a light, medium, and dark tones. So if you use some pencils, it's the same way. If you're using water paints, you just go from dark to light. That's all it is, really. It's really simple. And what I'm going to do, using a side-to-side -side motion, I'm going to put in the black first, and then I'm going to go down through the gray shades. Very simple to have you if you're coloring in with water paints, really. So you put a little bit of black, and then you come in line, just kind of fade it out. So you see here, I've got a black, and then it's going to start WG5, and I'll just kind of go over the lighter ones afterwards. You know, just one at a time. Using a side-to-side -side motion as well, you don't want to flick outwards. If you flick outwards, it's going to be really hard to get like a nice even tone. And we're also, we want to get nice even tones. So by doing that, you know, the side-to-side, -side, we kind of guarantee a nice even tone. 
So you see here, nice and clear, I'm gonna get this big bold bit of black and make sure you have plenty of black in these designs as well. I say every single time, especially with old school traditional, it's just such a key element. If you don't have it, it's not gonna look right. So don't be afraid to add loads of black and especially the pure black, you know, like if you're doing with some sort of pencils, don't be afraid to bring out the high Vs. Don't sort of like stick around like very soft shading. So gonna add that and again, we're gonna get, you know, bring the black out, but you wanna kind of fade out fairly quick. So once you have the black edge, you don't want to sort of drag that out too much. Just a really quick to the point kind of out sort of shading like this. You know, with old school, you don't really tend to get massive long transitions. You know, you do get sometimes with new school ones, but the old school ones are very quick to the point shading. So if you wanted to have a nice traditional vibe, just a really quick to the point out, outflow shade. So you can see that it comes together, you know, wings just look really amazing when you get nice loads of black in there. So that's been down there. So you see that one, and I'm going to apply the pretty much the exact same principle to the other one as well. So just in the exact same way, just get a nice bold bit of black, just initially a really nice curve across all the wings. Now you can sort of do each wing individually if you want. Um, it makes it a bit more tricky. And to be honest, it just doesn't look quite as clean normally. So I prefer to just go over all the wings, all the feathers like this in one big swoop. You know, sometimes I might maybe add on the top three ones, just like a little bit of like a sort of side motion, where you kind of go from the outer edge inwards. Um, but I don't always do that, you know, this way you can't go wrong. So just add that in there, add it in the second one, exactly like I've done the first two wings. But yeah, just be careful with it, just try to get, you know, a nice bit of black in there, just try not to go over your lines too much. You know, I tend to go pretty quickly, so you might have noticed a mistake every now and again, but don't worry about that, you know, don't beat yourself up, mistakes happen. You know, don't expect to get it perfect the first time as well, you know, like, you know, once you do this a few times, you'll be drawing them up like anything, super easy. You know, but uh, yeah, just take your time. You know, I'm going through this pretty quick, you know, but I draw these all day, every single day, so I can do these pretty quick. You know, if it takes you much longer, don't worry about that. You know, it's all about the end product. Don't sort of feel like you have to go the same speed as I do. So just starting off the back of the leg part here, and then the other leg, just a nice bit of bold black, and I'm gonna fade that out going into those lines. Oh, we put a little bit of color in there, so I'm not too worried too much about dragging that out too far. Just like that, nice bit of black does a trick. And I'm going to bring this down just across this bottom bit, and then I might black in a scale or two. Uh, I'll bring this line down. I want to make sure that this fade goes over initially part of those like midlines, but doesn't go too far that it covers up those midlines all the way. You know, put it in there for a purpose. It kind of gives that nice kind of pattern coming out of the shade. So yeah, just make sure you, you leave those lines there still. So that's pretty much most of the black now. I think I might just add one or two in the scales, I think I do. Oh yeah, a bit of black at the bottom now. I can't forget that. You don't necessarily have to do it on this bit, but I just quite like it. I'll have sort of black shade coming from the outside here. It just adds a bit more different direction to it because obviously where the direction is coming down from the top and this is Nengan's side, it just adds another dynamic to the design. You know, I quite like this kind of crossover of like shading down to the sides. You now it's kind of like put like a puzzle bit together almost. I'm flicking just a really bit of soft gray just here on the uh, face now, just a little bit above the eyebrow and a little bit just through the mid part of the, um, the back of the neck. And yeah, just a bit of black just here, just in these um, initial scales. I think it's just in the first one, I think. Yeah, just in like the first one, just there and there. You know, you can sort of fade that through all of them if you want. I tend to leave a little white, high a little white highlight on the edge of those ones as well. And I'm kind of going to come with the colors now. You've got the Winsor brush markers. I've got um, the 48 set here, so you can see what I'm kind of using. I'm not sponsored by them in any way, shape or form. It's just what I like to use, I recommend it. But I'm using the berry red, the fire brick and the amber for pretty much everything, I think. So you see here, this part of the wing here is just like the fire brick, which is like a nice kind of sort of like, you know, a strong kind of brown tone. And then the amber is like a really strong yellow tone. So I'm just blending that over the edge. You just kind of want to work the yellow over a few times and it'll cause it to bleed and blend a little bit. I recommend using the brush markers as well. Try to stay away from the pro markers. Um, these are known as the, the, the brush pro markers and that, but if you use the actual pro marker ones, the tip would be a really hard tip and they're really hard to blend. They're not as fun. You know, just make sure you use like a brush tip, you know, something like this or Copic markers, chameleon pens, or sort of like water brush markers, anything like that sort of does, does the trick. It just kind of works like a paintbrush in a way. But yeah, if you use like a brush, if you use like a pro tip, it's just not the same. They really give a bold color in though. The colors are brilliant them. It's just, they're not really easy to blend. So yeah, just working this yellow in on the feet, um, on the beak, that little top part of the wings. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it for the yeah, the red tone. So I'm gonna come in now with the uh, fire brick again. I'm just coloring a little bit of these scales. 
just like so. Leave that little highlight around the edge, just makes them really kind of pop. Just add this on the knees as well. Pretty much all those little kind of scaly parts we left. It just gives it a really nice, crisp, clean edge. Now, it's these kind of patterns in old school that really kind of make it traditional as well. You'll have noticed these kind of patterns pretty much all the time in pretty much everything that's old school. There'll be certain patterns you'll just see repeated. You know, the semicircle curves, the little white highlights, the little lines coming through them. You know, it's, it's a set amount of patterns that just things to get used over and over again. So, like, if you sort of learn what they are and you kind of add them, you can just add in more old school elements to just make it look really nice. So, I'm going to use my blender tip here, just a really quick little tip. If you hold your pen to the blender pen, just to the tip, just hold it for a few seconds, don't have for too long. It basically dyed the tip, and then when you start to draw with it, it will slowly kind of like run out the ink and make a really nice kind of face. So you see, I can use it side to side, and as I go, it's then going to just disappear to nothing. So if you have a color that's kind of hard, because obviously they're pens, if you're struggling kind of blending it out, use the blender pen like that. You know, just be careful a little bit low, because you can easily ruin your pen tip. You know, stuff like Chameleon pens are designed for that. They actually have a blending section um, that's used in the exact same way. So just hold it to the tip like so, and then just gently go side to side. You know, um, because these ones are quite small, just leave little gaps here, I'm sort of going between them. One, two, three, one bit, little bit of time. And by the time I get through it, it just like blends up, you know, to nothing. It was a wider area, I do it individually, but when these, these little rabbits are quite short, you can just go one to one. And yeah, it's got like a nice even kind of fade. You know, I'm a really fan of doing that sort of, you know, technique every now and again. I'm putting a little bit of red just in the background, like so. Um, it's really classic old school, just kind of like red fade in the background. It's, it's a really classic old school technique. And yeah, I'm just going to blend that out using the exact same blending technique again. Very short, don't have to blend that too much. Just a really nice little bit, just so it's got a bit of fade on the edge. And I'm going to do that pretty much in all those kind of little gaps. The top part, I'm just going to use the blender bit for because I don't want to drag out the red too much. In my head, I'm kind of pitching like a red circle, so like on the side, but you see a little bit more than the upper edge. Just like so. But yeah, I love the old school eagle. I could draw these all day. I think they're pretty much most tattooists' favorites. You know, they're just really fun to draw. They're really kind of therapeutic for us. You know, I don't know if it's the patterns, the shapes or what, you know, but I could draw old school eagles all day long and never get bored of them. You know, I absolutely love them. So yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed it too as well. You know, like, um, if you like this, make sure you check out my videos. You know, if you want more learning tools, make sure you head over to tattoospace.com. Like I said, I've got my brush sets on there. There's a bunch of other amazing artists on there, got our own sets. You know, mine's got like a heads and how to's with tutorials. I've got a lady head creator. We can create a 300,000 different combinations of heads. Um, I've got a whole bunch more sets coming as well. You know, very much kind of more like the uh, kind of learning side of things. So there's a lot more sort of tutorial stuff and kind of, you know, creating this sort of thing. So rather than just keep being the usual kind of ones, you know, I've got a lot of the learning tools on there. So yeah, just trying to get back to you guys, just trying to give you guys as many tools as you can have. So if you have, did you, you know, like an iPad or Procreate, which a lot of ta tattooists and stuff do, you know, it's a handy tool to have. But if you don't, don't worry, I've got hundreds of videos on here. You know, make sure you like to my, uh, make sure you're subscribed to my channel as well if it's your, if it's your first time. I'm getting a bit tongue tied now, but yeah, if it's your first time to my channel, make sure you subscribe. Uh, get a video a like as well. I really appreciate the like. The, the likes really help these videos get noticed. So if you can do that, it's really, really appreciated, people. But uh, yeah, for now, people, I'm and I'll see you next time. Peace.